Ours is a road 75 years long, a road that winds from deep in the heart of Texas to the U.S. Capitol and out onto the highways of this great nation. This is a road hewn through uncharted territory, flat, steep, banked, and curved, but always headed toward the horizon. This is no ordinary road, and this has been no ordinary road trip. Our journey begins in the dark days of the Great Depression. Down in San Antonio, Texas, a middle-aged insurance executive named Leo Goodwin came to the realization that the only way for his career to advance was to chart his own course. Leo was determined to make a name for himself in the insurance industry. With his new wife, Lillian, at his side, Leo took a calculated risk and a leap of faith and in 1936, the government employee's insurance company, Geico, was born. The Goodwins were savvy about the insurance business. They studied statistics and decided to tailor their new auto insurance product to federal employees and the top three grades of non-commissioned military officers. Leo was sure that if he could lower costs by marketing directly to these targeted groups, he'd be able to pass along lower premiums and still earn a profit. And what do you know? He was right. Geico soon opened its doors in Washington, D.C. And due to Goodwin's bold direct marketing strategy, the business took off. With word of mouth referrals and an emphasis on direct marketing, growth increased. Shortly after World War II, Geico sales soared to $2.4 million, thanks in part to increased car ownership, good roads, plenty of gas, and a humming economy. But mostly, it was due to a reputation for outstanding service that Goodwin had been determined to build one customer at a time. It was a stellar decade for Geico. In 1948, Leo needed to find new investment capital. Enter Lorimer Davidson. This brilliant investment banker and friend of the Goodwins found the needed investors. Among them, Benjamin Graham, a business professor at Columbia University in New York City, who, three years later, would find an extraordinarily gifted student by the name of Warren Buffett seated in his classroom. Mr. Buffett admired Professor Graham and he wanted to know more about his investment in Geico. So one Saturday morning in January of 1951, young Mr. Buffett took the train to Washington and the doorstep of Geico to conduct his own research. Being a weekend, he found the offices closed, but a custodian directed him to the office of future Geico CEO, Lorimer Davidson. Davidson figured he'd give the young man a few minutes of his time. And that conversation lasted the rest of the day and has echoed down through the years. Because of that auspicious encounter, Mr. Buffett made his first purchase of Geico stock. The 1960s brought even more growth. Premiums reached $150 million in 65. By 1966, net earnings doubled to $13 million and a number of sales and service offices opened for walk-in customers as did the first drive-in claims office. For Geico, the 60s were very groovy. In the early 70s, Geico grew rapidly, but by the mid-70s, dark clouds were gathering overhead. The insurance engine Leo Goodwin had started in 1936 that had roared to such great success was beginning to sputter. The years of aggressive expansion had triggered weaknesses in the company's lost reserves. By 1976, the problems the company faced were aggravated by a deep recession, and soon the company found itself on the brink of bankruptcy. Geico used that experience to strengthen its underwriting and reserving activities, which helped build the company's reputation as a fiscally superior organization, a tribute it takes pride in and works hard at maintaining to this day. In the 1980s, prudent underwriting prevailed as well as steady but cautious expansion. As the importance of customer service deepened, Geico introduced 24-7 telephone access for sales, service, and claims, a first in the industry. By 1993, an increased advertising budget propelled Geico toward a higher national visibility. Geico. A 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. In 1995, Warren Buffett bid for the remaining shares of Geico's outstanding stock. And in 1996, Geico became a subsidiary of one of the most profitable organizations in the country, Berkshire Hathaway. With new ownership came a new aggressive growth strategy. Geico introduced a website in 1996 where customers could get a quote online and national advertising expanded on an enormous scale. 
In 1999, a napkin doodle over an ad agency lunch evolved into a green spokes creature for the company. As this gecko pitch lizard developed, his popularity among television viewers increased. And by 2005, he was named America's favorite advertising icon in nationwide voting. In 2006, increased marketing, customer outreach, and a solid internet presence helped Geico to serve its 7 millionth policyholder. In 2007, continuing a long-standing effort to constantly improve customer service, Auto Repair Express rolled into hundreds of repair shops around the country. Policyholders were given a full service package of extras, on-site adjusters, on-site rental vehicles, lifetime service guarantees, and continuous claim supervision. With an expansion of products for motorcycles, boats, and other recreational vehicles, Geico Power Sports hit the road running. Today, in the minds of most Americans, Geico is as familiar and as famous as any U.S. brand in history. People may not know that Geico is the third largest private passenger auto insurer in the country and the largest auto insurer in several states, but they do know that Geico is just a mouse click or a phone call away for their insurance needs. CEO Tony Nicely credits the company's growth and success to its associates, who are committed to Geico's mission of excellent coverage, low prices, and outstanding customer service. And never far from the hearts and minds of those associates are Geico's first customers. Members of the military and federal employees respected for the jobs they do for all Americans. 75 years ago, two people started down an ambitious path equipped with perseverance and innovative ideas. Today, Leo and Lillian Goodwin would be awestruck to find that they've been joined by an army of nearly 25,000 associates serving over 10 million customers. Yes, this has been no ordinary road trip, and it's not over yet.